uh, then walk you through the my research project and uh, then we can talk about the open source uh, considerations for my project can you see my presentation yes, we can see you everything working okay that's good so uh, Briefly about myself, right? So I have a bachelor's degree in IT, a master's degree in finance. So probably this mixed background defined my research topic, which it also combines knowledge of finance with IT, right? I have many hobbies, but not much time for them, unfortunately. But the main of them probably just spending some time with my daughter, three years old. Uh, and I'm lucky to have three supervisors with Julian <laughs> among them, like playing pivotal role. And thank you for that, Julian. So you probably know him, no need to introduce. Uh, and also it's Professor Etabedi, who is a professor of computer science and University of Reading Computer Science Department, and also Alfonso Dufour, doctor, is uh, in the finance, uh, part of the Handy Business School, which is also part of University of Reading. Okay, so to my research project. Um, so the, the, the kind of ultimate problem that I'm solving is to come up with intraday stock price movement prediction model. And uh, uh, the more detailed formulation is like uh, to uh, first understand the current situation in this area, like many works were done, of course, but second is to explore the data sets that are available. It's also kind of special topic. The data availability is here is not always, uh, it's not always easy to get actually, or it can be expensive. And thirdly, it's like actually develop this mo model that we can, based on this data set and methodology defined, can actually predict the stock price. So what I expect like as a contribution from this research is like actually, first of all, understanding of the current state, uh, like of, of the current state in this research area and like, very detailed overview and make conclusions what what works best here and what's like needs improvement and where are these potential areas for improvement. Secondly, is like actually prepare a new data set that can be used for this particular task because there is uh, actually, uh, as I mentioned, uh, availability of the good data for training the especially deep learning model, which requires huge data sets to train on, is uh, is difficult to get sometimes, right? And uh, lastly, is actually develop this uh, new model, which is, could be maybe modified uh, version of the existing model, so something different architecturally or in terms of experimental design or in terms of feature use or any other aspects. And um, so, like, motivation for this, yeah, I mean, probably it's pretty clear, right? So uh, the it's on the top of the mind of the many investors and researchers how to be to be able to predict this stock price. And uh, so it's pretty clear why you need this. It can be used either for directly monetization or it can be used for market makers who want to understand the price trends. So many potential uses of this information or for executing the big orders for the uh, big, uh, big portfolio managers or funds. Okay, so what we already done as a detailed literature review, we actually even prepared draft article summarizing on this. Uh, and the kind of the main conclusion here is like, we define the types of data that are available for defining new trading strategies, like it's market data, fundamental data, or alternative data. And in each of those three areas, we like uh, made a detailed review of the works and models done. So our particular attention uh, uh, was 
taken by market data driven strategies, especially uh, those that were leveraged by high frequency trading firms, because like it's a uh, enormous return that many of them were able to generate, uh, like was a sign of there is, uh, this is an interesting area for further research. And uh, the fact that uh, the order flow and limit order book data is one of the key inputs for those kind of strategy for high frequency trading firms. Uh, like we, we decided to focus on this data because it's like source for many trading ideas in this high frequency trading area, which generating abnormal returns. That's why, like, this type of data and potential strategies based on this data were like focus on uh, further research. And uh, yeah, just this slide briefly over outlines the the process uh, methodology of this uh, research. It's pretty typical for any machine learning or deep learning process like you starting with preparation of data set which is in this case it's limit order book data uh it could be different providers for example it could be nasdaq data or i'm also collecting some data from moscow stock exchange and uh, once we have this data collected cleaned normalized we just uh starting to uh, applied standard models, we tried a couple of just very uh, shallow uh, machine learning models or typical like uh, decision trees, uh, multi-layer perceptrons like so, base basics, and just to set up the baseline of performance and prediction based on this data set. Uh, and yeah, and after having this baseline, we looking where and which models are better and where there's a potential for further improvement, like defining the uh, opportunities to improve architecture or research or uh, experimental setup or features uh, selection to, to get to the better performance, like, and uh, and to understand this performance, we actually uh, applying this to this data sets, like splitting in uh, to the training and test sets, like training on the training set, and then evaluating the performance of this uh, model uh, based on this typical statistical uh, performance metrics like accuracy, precision, recall, uh, and the most important probably if one score since the data is uh, unbalanced uh, because like three classes in this data usually price going up stay more or less flat or going up going up right and uh, and uh, depending on the horizon of forecasting it can be unbalanced among them heavily so that's why if one score probably the most significant metric because it's uh, punishing for for uh, kind of predicting only one class, which could be, <laughs> which could otherwise drive high accuracy, right? And, and yeah, so our benchmarks for the models compared are set based on this accuracy precision recall, most importantly F1 score, and we just want to get to the uh, like the ultimate goal is to to compare this existing models and the new proposed models based on these metrics as well as other qualitative considerations like practicality like isn't it this an overfitting how it can be generalized to the other data sets and hopefully it should be better than existing model otherwise probably doesn't make sense to, to suggest anything if it's not better so yeah just a couple of words of the input data Exactly right. What's limit order book is so there is actually illustrative example of what it is. It's basically for the different time stamps. It's like price and quantity at different levels. Like uh, the best starting from the best price on the ask side and best price on the bid side and deeper to the uh, order book. So uh, we started with a benchmark LB that set which was actually open sourced. Uh, <laughs> back to our main point, right? 
which consists of five Finnish stocks. You can see the charts, which is depicting uh, how they were developing around these 10 trading days. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, the classes are heavily unbalanced. So you see it's like in many, depending on the prediction horizon, uh, th this is changing, but mostly, mostly the uh, yellow class, which is flat, like no change in price is dominating, which should be taken into account during training. Yeah, and we tried like different types of normalization. Most common is Z-score normalization. Uh, yeah, to fit into the uh, uh, MLP, right? So if we're using decision tree, it probably we don't need normalization. It just depends on the model that we are applying to. But uh, yeah, for the neural networks, we need to normalize the data. So to make sure that the gradient is working. Ah, uh, yeah, and, and and to the experiments we just started was very simple uh, architecture. We just have forty input features, which is like uh, bid, ask, side, prices, and volumes, right? So it's like ten levels of prices and volumes on the bid and ask side. Then there's just a hidden layer with also 14 neurons, and then three outputs, uh, and the output layer with three neurons, which is basically those three classes up, flat, flat or down, depending on the price direction. And uh, you see, like, accuracy on this simple model is somewhat hmm, not very good. It's somewhat around 40%, but F1 scores was very poor. So it's like, basically, this model is not very helpful. Uh, so we continue with other models and uh, apply typical decision tree model. And you see there's a kind of brief visualization of this model. It actually demonstrates pretty good performance for such a simple model, right? So it's like almost 68 F1 score, accuracy around 60. So not not bad for a simple model, right? And uh, it also shows which features are most important, right? So it looks like volume features are much more important than the price features because we see like at the top at the top nodes almost all features are volume features, right? Uh, and prices are much deeper, right? so you don't even see them because it's like abbreviated form with only top nodes shown, right? And then we just going more and more advanced and applied combination of convolutional neural network plus long short term memory. You see it's pretty deep uh, like architecture with many layers starting from input layers, then a couple of convolutional layers with max pooling, leaky, relu, and, uh, and uh, at the end we have this long short term memory just to capture the uh, the fact that uh, the data is a time series, right? And we need to pay different attention to the events that happens just few uh, uh, or or few events back and hundred events back. And then the output three layers, just up, flat, or down, as in the prior simple configuration. So uh, probably would not dive into much details. How many like so the the the, the Probably the main thing just to focus on is the input features, which is like 40 by 100 tensor. So it's previously it was just a 40, but now it's times 100 because now we have 100 timestamps. So just basically we have 40 features at each uh, timestamp, which are those price and volume at 10 levels of bid and ask side, right? And 100 timestamps of the the most recent 100 uh, events in the limit order book. And uh, that's the tensor that goes as an input to this model. And then, yeah, there's a convolutional max pooling, uh, all this like filtering happening. Uh, and uh, in, after that, LSTM with 64 neurons and dense layer with three output classes up, flat down. So this model actually demonstrates 
very strong performance already. So you see it's a flat score in excess of 80%, accuracy also in excess of 80%. But uh, as you can see on this chart, there is uh, symptoms of overfitting because for training uh, set, it continues improving, but validation set is already declining performance from some point, somewhere around 50 epochs who are already overfitting. And, uh, and that's one thing to be careful and adjust properly, just uh, either stop it after 50 epochs or do some many other <laughs> potential things to avoid overfitting like drop out layers and uh, feature engineering like reduce number of features or number of neurons okay um how much time we have and uh, i think that's it for my research project i think we need to go to the to discuss actually the main topic, right? <laughs> and this is like open source and data, and data uh, open source of data, right? And uh, for me as a researcher, probably three sub areas of this open source that were relevant and uh, which I, sh uh, I wanna talk about how like the issues that I encountered then, how I was solving them. So uh, first one is like to get prior research papers in the field. It seems trivial, but uh, yeah, there there were some some caveats and, and problems in this too. And uh, the second is to get the code of those prior works, right? To actually reproduce the experiments and actually reuse it or for further modification improvements. And third is the data set for training and testing the, those models, right? It's also uh, not easy to get. So the pain points with the research papers prior, right? So some scientific and journal require subscription, right? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the reality, right? And the second problem is that some works are not publicly available at all. Just, yeah, there's some authors like uh, some universities are not allowing the distribution or put some period after which they can be distributed, which like make it, uh, difficult to see the whole picture you just see only those words that you can find and uh, what solutions could be to that yes the hope uh, likely some journals allow your uh, university account allow access through the university account like um, and yeah what you have to do is just to limit your scope of review to those publicly available works Yeah, the second thing is there's code, actually code, right? Main, probably main uh, thing for main topic of the discussion, right? And um, actually most of the papers that are viewed, authors haven't shared the code, which means that uh, <laughs> you cannot reproduce it really. And uh, sometimes if, even if they share this, this like, the co quality of code sometimes uh, super poor, and it's also uh, there's no documentation explanation what is happening, just part of the code available, right? And um, and sometimes yeah, the code is getting expired. For example, if it's Python code, if it's using old libraries or like all this kind of stuff, it, it becomes unreproducible unless you substantially uh, uh, rewrite or update this for the new library versions right uh and often authors provide the code but not the data set and it means you still cannot reproduce because uh like this data is not really available you don't know maybe this code works but you don't have the data to, to try it and uh, what i have to do to to get with those potential issues is that uh, yes my main focus was on the papers with the code and uh, even I was able to find some code for the papers that were not explicitly linked or like mentioned in the paper that there is a code on the github or google collab um, yeah there was a few cases 
And uh, what I had to do is actually updating the outdated code for the newer version of the libraries myself, and uh, also trying to recreate the data sets which was used for those models. Uh, probably last thing so, uh, <laughs> uh, to say is the data sets like, and uh, what, what's, I already provide some overview of the data set that I'm using, which is limit order book, high frequency market data. And uh, actually this is very expensive product. For example, NASDAQ selling this for thousands, thousands of dollars to investors, this kind of data. But, um, and there is also like, even if you have this data, you may not maybe prohibited from publishing this data because you need the permission, for example, from NASDAQ or any other data provider uh, to publish this data set. So that's another problem. First, you get this, and second, you cannot publish this. And uh, so the to overcome these problems, yeah, the, the one trick is that NASDAQ actually, may, probably some other data providers are uh, a lot of academic waivers, which is basically they are providing to the researchers who can confirm their status and uh, like provide overview of their project, confirm that they have supervision from a particular university, and then they can provide you this data. Uh, and um, the other solution is that actually some researchers somehow manage to go through the, those two challenges and ultimately publish some data sets. For example, this benchmark LOB data set. And uh, this is a great help for me, especially it was a great starting point uh, to start with those readily available open sources data sets. So I think that that's pretty much it from my side on the my project and uh, open source. So, um, if you have any questions or clarifications, please do ask. Uh, otherwise, I'm happy to wrap up and uh, uh, yeah, to, to uh, <laughs> we can move to the next speaker. Thank you.